right, welcome back to Beers Illustrated. It has been a long time between videos. I've just been so busy. Uh, I've been trying to get so much done. I've had a few videos that have fallen through on me. Um, and, you know, it, it's just what happens. It, it Life goes on. But I have finally, actually, this interview fell through on us the first time. It did, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yep. traffic and all sorts of crap got hold of me. But I'm finally here at Make. Uh, down in Coolangatta. I'm here with Dave Heaviside. Thank you very much for joining me, mate. No worries. Uh, I usually always have a beer when I'm doing these interviews, but it is a little bit early in the morning and um, <laughs> we didn't want to start too early. But uh, Dave has been doing a lot of design work of late around the industry. You probably would have seen if you've um, if you've been paying any attention. Um, you've been doing a lot of stuff for Black Ops lately. I have, yeah. It started probably about a year ago. Yeah. Um, so it's funny, the relationship that I have with Black Ops and in particular Dan and the boys actually started when I was working um, as, a, as a web designer uh -huh. um, at a little web firm called Seventh Vision, which is situated in the building right next door to where they opened the brewery in, uh -huh. in Burley. Yeah. So location, location, location. It was all about location. Um, yeah, I was working down there and then one day – We'd sort of come back from a walk from lunch with the lads and all of a sudden there's a Black Ops logo up on the wall and I'm like, oh, what's this brewery uh -huh. happening yeah. next door? So um, it was pretty cool. We stuck our heads in and probably one of the first crew to, to have a try of their beers and nice. met Dan and the, and the boys there. And that was, um, that was yeah, five years ago now. So um, I hadn't really done anything with those guys and up until last year when um, when COVID hit. Yep. So, yeah, the, it sort of came about. I'd moved on from my web design role at 7th at Vision there and then um, <clears throat> had started to work for, for the boys here at Make. Yep. Um, but we were very much in the uh, events and brands activation space. So here we do a lot of work for some of the bigger brewers um, and bigger brands. So we do some work for Forex and Heineken and, yeah. That, but it's primarily around the, the, the activations and, and bringing their brands to life in, in the experiences and the events around around probably southeast Queensland and a little bit in Melbourne too. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I was used to – that was probably over the last three years. I got really used to working with brand assets and particularly in the beer industry and it was a really good way to get sort of an insight into how those big brands really bring things to life. And, yeah. And how tightly they control sort of everything from their image to logos yep. and assets and that yeah, sort of how stuff. How it all looks in the real world. Basically. Yeah, yeah. And taking that and, and putting it on a container or putting it on some huge signage or a billboard and, yep. and really getting to know how those brands do things. And then um, uh, obviously all the event work dried up um, with COVID and we were sort of scrambling for, for work. As everyone was. As everyone was. And I just reached out to Dan and I said, look, hey, you know, uh, have you got anything that I can sink my teeth into? And he goes, oh, I've, you know, funnily enough, we've got our fourth birthday uh -huh. coming so up. So that was the first project you were It on. was, yeah. And it was, yeah, actually, I remember it um, very well. I remember when it came out because it was such a departure from everything that they'd been doing previously. And and the cans, you know, be, being for a birthday uh, and, and having, you know, the, the range that you, you brought out and they were just so unique in what Black Ops had been doing. And it really caught my eye, actually. I, instantly I knew, you know, there was, there, was, there was a different brain involved in it. <laughs> uh, and, and, you know, credit to you for, for sort of, you know, re-envisaging the way that Black Ops was, was seen, I guess. Yeah, I think uh, it was, you know, I was really lucky to, that Dan just sort of trusted me to take the reins on things. Yep. Um, he's always been pretty hands-off in the design process, although he knows what he likes and doesn't like. Exactly, um, yeah. And so do the rest of the boys. So, so Eddie and Gov say have got a big input in, as well as a team and, and the rest of the crew. So um, he was quite happy for me to sort of just do what I thought worked, I guess, and for the beers. So... Um, it was a it was a great opportunity for me to sort of let my creative kind of juices flow essentially. Yeah, Just yep. because like working with the, the bigger brands, you, you got a you know a logo and a you know strict brand guidelines that you always have to stick to. So yes, yeah, it's fun work, but you never get to be really creative within no. that. Um, yeah. It's very limited in what you can do. So as soon as I got the chance to stretch my creative legs, I was like awesome. So I kind of went to town on it. 
Um, and as soon as I sort of sent him over the first couple of designs and we had a bit of feedback on it, he's like, I really like where you're going. Just continue this sort of design theme, which was, yeah. I like the sort of minimalistic kind of vibe on things. I think there was a bit going on at the time in the industry where um, it had started to come in. Obviously, Bolter had started kind of doing a bit of sort of like minimalism with, with yeah, their can yeah, design. Their white out that they the, have. In the, yeah, yeah. And, and it was – there was still like a lot – like if you looked at the – in the fridge at the time, even a year ago, everything was still really busy. Um, yeah. And Bolter really stood out because it was kind of minimal. Yeah. And so – I sort of took that and then sort of put my own twist on the minimalism sort of things. And then obviously, and, and as you said, when the, when they sort of launched the designs, it, it got quite good feedback and the boys were really happy. And I think yeah. this was probably the one here. The, um, is that your favourite? The favorite? Murder Hornet. Yeah, yeah I love that. The one that kind of got the most feedback, I think, yeah. from particularly within the uh, internal um, Black Ops team and then also just the comments and stuff that sort of were floating around online around it. Yeah. So, I never got the chance to photograph it. I, I would have loved to have photographed it at the time when it came out. Um, uh, yeah, it, I missed the opportunity, but I, I didn't get hold of any of them. Um, but that was the thing. I think it was the very first, or it might not have been the very first, but it was one of the first times where Black Ops had lines going around the corner waiting yeah. for the beers. And yeah, that was a bit of a trip out, actually. I, yeah. I, I remember... Um, when they when they launched it on the website, I was sort of like eager to see just how kind of well it would be received because it's one thing to sort of get comments online, but then if people actually go and buy it and buy yeah. the beer, um, it's a different story. And then, yeah, when the sort of the, the word started filtering through that there was lines around the block and the website crashed and all of that sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, and then, it, you know, it was sort of sold out in sort of four minutes, yeah. I think, online. It was kind of like, wow, all right, we've, we're onto something here. And, and um, yeah, since that sort of first crack at it, um, Dan sort of giving me pretty much free reign. On no, yeah, it's good to ha- most good, of the other ones. Good so. to have a good running start at it like that, and then for it just to, to keep going on. Yeah, so so that was that, and then um, I've probably done about twenty three or twenty four of the limited releases um, yeah. since then. Yeah. So yeah, it was a, it was a good start, um, and I was just really thankful that um, Dan and the team really kind of gave me the opportunity to yeah, yeah to, absolutely to give it a shot. So. And and even in just such a short space of time you've managed to have um, a couple of designs or at least one main design that has evolved really quickly in such a really short space of time with the East Coast low turning into the East Coast haze? Yeah. Um, So those who do follow sort of um, Black Ops uh, pretty closely will know the story around it. Um, But, yeah, essentially East Coast low was an idea that Dan and I sort of came up with. I really wanted to do a beer – based on the the weather system, yeah. which is like the East Coast low. Yep. So just that whole, like I, I'm a surfer, a bodyboarder. Uh-huh. So I follow like the weather patterns all the time. Like I'm always looking at here. I mean, the ocean's 20 meters that way. Yeah. I'm, like I get out whenever I can. <laughs> yeah, yep. And I was just looking one day at the, um, the charts and just this, when this East Coast low spun up, um, I was like, oh, that'd look great on a can. So let's just do a, so I pitched it to Dan. I said, can we do a beer called East Coast Low? And I'll yeah. put this like cool cyclone thingy on there. I reckon it'll look cool. Um, and he's like, all right, leave it with me. A couple of weeks later, he, he shot back and he goes, yeah, we've got a we've got an idea for a low low ABV hazy. I'm yep. like, all right, cool. Like, let's do it. So we brought that to life. Right. Every, everything just came together perfectly there. Hazy, you know, with the, the clouds and everything. Yeah. It's the kind of weather system that brings in that sort of feel. Low ABV, yeah. Yeah, so that so they put that out as a, as a limited, and um, it didn't do too well because it was a released in November, I think, last year. Yeah, and it was just kind of in an awkward spot. Like the everyone sort of like stocks up massively for Christmas, and yeah. like yeah. everything's kind of done at that point. And then mm. people, when they're buying late November, early December, they're just buying slabs of you know whatever they can. Yeah, get for I, I've got to say, I sank a few of those on New Year's Eve. Yeah, well, it, it was interesting because the people that did buy it really loved it. Yeah. And then the feedback they got from that kind of led into them going like, look, we need this particular beer. And I think off the back of some of the the beers that were released last year, you know, Ballistic having their Hawaiian Haze out, yep. um, a couple of the other sort of low ABV hazies that were starting to filter into the market, they just thought, look, this is a perfect time to take it into the core range mm. um, and take a bit of a punt on it. 
and a big punt they took. Yeah, a <laughs> huge punt. Yeah, and then so the but the thing was, oops, um, that they, Dan didn't want. He was really adamant about not having low in the name. Yeah, because it's not a low, low, you know, uh, sort of traditionally low ABV beer. Yep. And so he thought that you know, East Coast low on the shelf would just kind of people would glance over it and just assume that it's a you know, three, three, three three and a half or two and a half percent sort yep. of beer. So we sort of had a bit of a dilemma where you, you, if you take low out the name and it's just East Coast, it's whatever. Yeah. The, the East Coast low is the weather system. Yep. So I'd actually already designed up the entire can and modified it to the actual um, subliminal print. Yeah. Sub, sub, uh, that's not the right word, <laughs> but the actual can, the element, the print on the aluminium can is a completely different process and printing yes. the label, yeah. as you'll yeah. know. So um, there's a lot of limitations with printing on a can. Yeah, here you can just basically four color print, do whatever you want. Yeah, it's fine on a label, but then if you you, you just can't reproduce that on a can, so right. I had to go and sort of figure out how that that was going to look on a can. And once we did that, then Dan's like, I can't have low in the name, and so I was like, oh, no, what are we going to do? Um, and then he was, he really wanted it haze in the name. So it became East Coast Haze, but yep. then we had to kind of drop the whole weather system yeah. thing. Um, but I still wanted that reference to what it began, like it's to its previous life. Yeah. Um, so that's when the idea of trying to just visualize uh, in a simpler way what like the waves would look like on a can and really utilizing, I guess, the aluminium to yep. when you move it, it kind of looks like when you get the sunlight over the waves. Yeah. And it just moves through and ripples when you're it's flying. It's a bitch to photograph, here. by the way. Oh, it's it's a nightmare. The, sil- we- the silver just throws everything out. And it was really funny because like when, when I was doing the mock-ups, it was like, all right, this is going to look cool. Like you can move it and it'll look great. And then the first bit of feedback when they down got the cans back, mm. it was like the cans look amazing in real life but they're impossible to photograph. Yep. And he had a photo I, I found that out when I, <laughs> I photographed them myself. I, little secret, little secret, I actually put, I actually like photoshopped the logo and the name East Coast Haze out and added them in myself. There you go. So, <laughs> yeah, like in it. Secrets out. Was, secrets out. But I think like, and that's when I had that like just moment of like, oh, have I really like effed up here? Yeah. Like, you know, it's, but yeah, people have figured it out, and you know, like yourself, you know, found ways around the the issue. And um, yeah, I think it still looks great on the shelf, and I'm still really happy with the execution. Hundred percent, yeah. And I and just, it, yeah, it's been really interesting. You don't often see a brand or, or a product evolve so quickly. Uh, you know, in, in less than oh, it's six, six months. Six yeah. months, you've seen that go from this can to that can in in a complete evolution of a product, and and you know, to go that quickly into core range as well. So yeah, it's been really cool to watch. Yeah, cool. Yeah, it's, um, it, 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 I think that's the way that the guys move. Like Dan and the team, they move so fast. Yeah, like he doesn't muck around. He just gets in, gets stuff done. He knows what he likes, doesn't like, and boom, like it'll happen. So, um, and I guess you just don't have the luxury of time when you're brewing beer. You know, you got to get mm. it and, and punch it out. So it was cool. Um, but it was a stressful sort of transitional period. But we yeah. got there, and yep. I'm really happy with the result. And yeah, heaps of people are uh, are buying it, which is great. So yeah, hundred percent. Still an epic beer, which come summertime will definitely be a fridge filler. Oh, land. for sure. It's just yeah. the right price point as well. I think yep. that was the right they price. That. It's a fantastic beer. It's got a little bit of dryness to it, which I really like. So, what are what are the other designs that that are your favourites, mate? Yeah, so I probably um, pulled out just a couple of other ones, which I was really proud of. Um, the Cream Cloud. Was yeah. a reinvention of a previous release that they had. Um, I had this little program on my phone which created these kind of it's like a, a fluid simulator. Yep. And so it created these really really cool patterns. And I just I messaged the guy and I said, "Look, can I use this fluid simulator to create some beer labels?" And he's like, "Yeah, go for it." Cool. So, um, yeah, came up with these little fluid simulations which we did. Um, on that was actually a, a trio that we released under the cloud series. Yep. So it was cream cloud, um, acid cloud, and thunder cloud. I think. Yep. Um, so they were just variations on that. But I was that was one of those ones where it was just a really experimental label for me. So yeah. it took me a long time to go through and find the right, create the right sort of look and feel with each of the the different setups in the fluid simulator and 
once I got them and, and had processed them and created the labels out of them, I was really happy and they looked great. And I just thought they were so different from whatever was going on at the time. Yeah. Um, and moving away from, like I'd traditionally been doing sort of really um, kind of straight vector sort of illustrations and designs and this was a departure from that. Where yeah, I got a little sort bit of, more abstract. A little bit more abstract, a little bit different. Um, they got really good reception as well. So that one. Yeah. Um, we touched on this one when you yes, walked in earlier. Yes, we walked in. That one's very close to my heart. I, I had a bit to do with the the overall process of that whole beer with, in uh, my role at Blaster. So, yeah, much I, – I love that beer. I love the design. Yeah, so that one was a, a bit of an evolution as well. Um, it started out as a completely different look and feel and I pretty much had the label completed and um, it just was a, a, a total – different look and I sent it to Dan and they're just like, look, we can't make this work. It's just not working. And it was sort of the first one, first design I really had to bin and then start over <laughs> from scratch. So I wasn't sure about doing that, but then yeah. um, to end up where we ended up, I think it just um, blended the the black ops and the blaster aesthetics nicely. And absolutely um, it became a sort of a really strong design and yeah. um, the beers a cracker as well. So yeah, both beers were great. The, the designs looked Awesome. Uh, it was. It was a little bit sort of. Um, it was for me. It was a bit heartbreaking that we didn't get both of them out at the exact same time over yeah, here. Yeah, they good. managed to do it over in Perth. Oh, cool. They had a couple of places that had both of them on tap at the same time. Yeah, they had both of them in the fridges at the same time. We kind of volume one sold out relatively quickly. So by the time the volume two made it over to Perth uh, from Perth, it um, volume one was just about gone. Yeah, so, I. I'd hundred percent get grab these again. Like they were, they were really, really good beers. And this is out now. You can still get it. Yes. At, um, yep. At Black Ops, so that's really cool. They just did a re-release of that. Um, and then probably the one that is probably my most favourite um, out of all of them. Yeah. Uh, actually, I actually have got two favourites, which is this one here as well. But um, Neverland was uh, another re-release from a um, staff beer. Yeah. Um, so yep. a staff beer that was. Uh, that was released and then Dan wanted it to, that was, which was just a tap room release. Uh, but Dan, then it was a cracker beer, grapefruit, hazy IPA. It went gangbusters. Eight and a half, eight Everyone and loved it. Yeah. I've heard like people have been saying, you know, out of all of the limiteds, this has been the one that stood out most for them. Uh, and, and it's got a, yeah, an absolute cracker of a design to go with it. Yeah. So that was probably another one where I sort of went a bit left field and, and sent Dan and the boys something that was a little bit kind of, a bit, I don't know, how do you explain it? Maybe <laughs> yeah. Dreamlandy, but that was the whole vibe. It was Neverland. It was sort of like, how can you get into inside, inside someone's head and create like a real dream sort of scape? And just the way that it came together was, was really nice. And yeah. just having the little snowboarder on there was like a pretty cool little touch. And yeah, it was just, um, it was really cool to see the reception and that beer is a belter. So yes, um, yeah, was, they bring the, and I think I'm hoping that, I don't know, Dan, if they bring it out again and we do it in cans, this will actually work nicely on a on a can, um, as yeah. well as the label. So yeah, yep. Who knows? We'll see. Um, we've already touched on the Murder see, Hornet, Murder Murder Hornet, but this was like um, probably the one where I went as far away from traditional label design, um, yeah. as I could probably get, and it was off the back of Dan going, "Look, we've, we're going to do the Mega Hornet and the the Black Hawk um, as a pair." Mm. Uh, and we want to do like kind of like this military theme, and he sent through an idea of like it's the the Black Hawks obviously based on the helicopter. Yep. Um, and I'm a massive fan of models, so like uh-huh. when I was a kid, I used to get the kits and put them all together. Yeah. Um, my my older cousin actually is an engineer for Qantas, and when we were kids, we'd go around to his house. He's probably about. I think he's probably seven or eight years older than I am. Yeah. But as a kid, I'd go around and his room would just be filled with model airplanes, like uh-huh. everything. And I, so I got into it yep. and I was like, this is the coolest. So I remember these model airplane kits and there's an album cover um, by the Screaming Jets. Yes. Which features a, a model airplane kit on there. And I was kind of like inspired by that, but I didn't want to do exactly the same yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I found these schematic drawings um, of both the, the Black Hawk and the... Um, uh, F-111 Hornet. Yep. Um, the Super Hornet. And so 
was like, oh, could, we can could just call it the Mega Hornet and just pretend that it's a Mega yeah. Hornet. Oh, you, you've um, got to take a little bit of creative license. And they actually got a really, really cool reception for just being yeah. something completely different. Yep. Um, and I think they were even picked up on a couple of like military blogs and we had people from all over <laughs> the world. And particularly, I think there was a couple of Black Hawk pilots and crew that were asking for them oh, you wow. know, from overseas and cool. that sort of thing. So it was one of those ones that kind of, um, again, had its own life outside just the the release and the video yeah. and, and had to, yeah so that was really cool um and i really really proud of those ones so yeah they're probably my my favorite out of yeah. the 20 or so yep. that i've done but um cool yeah. well you you i don't know if we're allowed to touch on it uh you've got the the fifth birthday hq's fifth birthday coming up yep uh you've done the cans for that as well i've seen a little bit of a sneaky peek online yeah yeah um that was pretty interesting uh dan actually released that photo and i hadn't even I just sent him the sort of the mock-ups oh, and, Dan, okay. and I was like, whoa, whoa, like, like I'd sent the label designs to him yeah. that day. Yeah. Done just the for approval. Just for approval. Done yeah. the mock-ups. And he's like, boom, here it is. I'm like, well, okay. Uh, I guess that's approved guess then. that's it. <laughs> um, which is pretty cool. So yeah, the fifth birthday was, um, for those who haven't seen it, jump onto Black Ops Instagram or Facebook yeah, pages. Yeah, they look at it. Um, and that was something that I've wanted to do for a long, long time. So uh-huh. Um, I'm a drummer as well. I play in a band called Rinser. Yeah, I um, think I—I I don't know. I'm, I'm just gonna—I'm gonna keep it quiet for now. But I think I know what's coming. So go on. Yeah. So uh, Led Zeppelin's one of my favorite. Yeah, I knew that was also. coming. <laughs> <laughs> I, as soon as I saw it, I was like, "Oh, that looks yeah, very Zeppelinish." Um, I don't have any tattoos, but if I was to get a tattoo, yep. it would be John Bonham's symbol yes. from the Led Zeppelin Four album. And I've always wanted to sneak it in somewhere to a beer design, like yep. just. I'm just such a biggest, you know, Bonham fan and Zeppelin fan. And like, yeah. I'm like oh, how can, how, I do how it? can you not be it? And then this opportunity, I was like racking my brain down, goes, we've got to do five different labels, but they've all got to be in a series. And I'm just yeah. like, and here's the beers. And I'm like, I have no idea what to do. And then I was just, one day I was just playing around with different, <clears throat> playing around with different ways to like, you know, do one to five, like Roman numerals or yeah. one, two, three, four, five, or like, what am I going to do? And then I was like, wait a second. So I was like, one circle, two circles, three circles, because yeah. I can sneak it in, yeah. four circles, five circles. So it was just that. Um, and that was kind of like the inspiration behind awesome. it. And so, yeah, I managed to get it in there. And um, I think someone mentioned on the Instagram feed, if you go and see it, it the series of Venn diagrams, which I thought was pretty funny. <laughs> I, hadn't yeah, actually, yeah. I hadn't actually considered that uh-huh. at all. It was just like, can I get John Bottom in there? Yes. Yes, okay, he's in. And then it was, um, yeah, just, ma- just matching the... Actually, it was, it was pretty cool because I went through the um, the beer the beers themselves because I quite like to. It's not just about the label. Like I actually like to read up on the beer and what the beer is and um, the inspiration behind the beer itself. Yeah, like the flavor profile and whatever's going on, and try to blend yeah. that into the read label. Read Gums' blurbs. Yeah, because he is an absolute poet. Yeah, yeah. On the blurbs, go and look up any Black Ops blurb. Govs is. I don't know how he does it. He's a genius. He is a genius. And yeah. it was really funny because there's no blurbs on these. Uh-huh. On the, oh, sorry, <laughs> oh. just that's a little sneaky. So, I'm, I'm, But Dan was like, we've got too much going on. Gus doesn't have time to write like five blurbs. <laughs> all right, yeah, fair, so, fair call. So I was like, all right, fair enough. Um, yeah. we, and so I was reading just the ingredients in the beer. So they're actually based around like the, the circles represent and the way that I – ordered the beer in terms of like one to five. Yep. It was actually based on the number of ingredients or a specific detail in the beer itself. Yep. Um, so I dare say that Dan's going to probably uh, release it. By the time probably this comes out, it's already going to be. Possibly, yeah. Um, Depends how quick I edit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they, for those that, that do uh, see this, uh, I guess after the fact they come out, it'll make sense that um, how I've structured the one to cool. five as well. So a bit of a sneaky thing. In awesome. There. Um, and for those that do manage to get a can, there's a little bit of an Easter egg in the design as well. Um, it'll be pretty obvious once you get it. Yeah. Um, and hopefully it comes up well. But yeah, we've, we've done a bit of an homage to, to all of the beers that have been brewed. Very cool. Um, in there as well. So um, at Black at Black Ops 1 anyway. Yep. So, yeah. So they'll come out and um, hopefully crash the internet again. Yeah. <laughs> hope, hope so. They'll I don't know. know if they're selling them online though. So yeah. I don't know. we'll see. Maybe, it, maybe we'll, yeah, by the time this comes out, I guess we'll know. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, Dave, thank you very much for joining me today. Well, actually, thank you for having me here in, in, your, uh, in your studio. Um, it's been really great seeing 
the little backstory behind a bunch of these designs of um, ever since, yeah, the fourth birthday beers come out, I, I wanted to come and meet you and, and say hi. Uh, Cause black hops just use some of the best designers around, um, you know, the, all of their core range cans, um, you know, were designed by DKNG studios and I've been a massive fan of their work for years. Um, and can't forget Matt. As and well. and the Shout original, I was about to, I was just getting to the <laughs> original logo because um, I'm one of Matt's biggest fans. He, um, he's just a, such a top guy. So a big shout out to Matt for, for creating a brand that's been so easy to build on. Um, well, I don't know, maybe not so easy to build on, but it's been such a good sort of central sort of base for everything that's grown around it. Um, so yeah, thank you very much Thanks for, for, uh, for sitting down with me this morning. Yeah, it's been an absolute pleasure and um, it's, it's fun to talk a beer. So. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, make sure that you, uh, if you like the video, give it a little thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. If you haven't already go over to the socials and, uh, and check all them out, give them follows. It all helps me out and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Cheers. Awesome. Cool.